Well, let's talk to our first guest this evening, Samat La Grant, who is the National Security Advisor to David Cameron and Theresa May, also permanent representative of the UK to the United Nations. Thank you for being on the programme. Good programme. evening, sir. Well, the United Nations Security Council is meeting uh, about this issue in New York. Is there anything you think they can really realistically achieve? I don't think so, sadly, in terms of a end product. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, as you say, during the day, but twice resolutions have been put forward, firstly by Russia, then by Brazil, both of which were vetoed uh, by one country or another. And I think that won't change today because the council is very divided between those who are 100% supporting Israel and its right to self-defense and others who are more concerned about the suffering of the Palestinians now. I mean, it's not the answer that anyone wants to hear, frankly, um, but perhaps not that surprising. Um, what about the role of the UK? Um, some people have said to me on the show that they say perhaps the UK is seen as a bit more of a trusted broker than the US in the Middle East. Is that fair, do you think, or do you think that's a bit optimistic? Well, Britain can potentially play a role once diplomacy comes back. You know, at the moment, the diplomacy is focused on, uh, on the issues of the hostages, trying to get the hostages out, and that's being led by the Americans with the Qataris and the Egyptians. It's also focused on aid, humanitarian aid, getting humanitarian aid into uh, Gaza, and also about preventing a spread of this uh, conflict even wider in the region. Now, on all those issues, really, the Americans are bigger players than the United Kingdom. But when it comes to the next stage, the day after, then I think Britain does have some credibility with both sides and could play a role in looking for longer-term security solutions for Israel and its neighbours. I want to talk a bit about those longer-term solutions, because I, I guess, you know, looking at this from some, my perspective, one thing that's things that seems most brutal about this conflict is it's so hard to see an end game, like a, a peace, effectively. Do you hold out any hope? Well, Israel has set out its key objective, which is to destroy Hamas as a military organisation, a military threat, and also decapitate it as a political organisation. Whether they can achieve that through military means, I think, is an open question. But even if they do achieve that, the question is, what then? Mm. Because who is going to administer Gaza? Certainly, the Israelis do not want to permanently occupy Gaza. The Palestinian Authority, which runs the West Bank, hasn't got the credibility or capacity to run Gaza. So someone is going to need to think of who is going to actually physically administer and run Gaza once uh, the military operations are over. Secondly, even if Israel does achieve that military objective, the Palestinian issue remains. Mm. And at some point, that too has to be addressed if the security of Israel is to be uh, assured into the longer term. What do you mean, the Palestinian issue? Well, Israel has tried, really, over the last 15 years to deal with the Palestinian issue. The Palestinians demand for an independent, sovereign state of their own, which is supported, has been supported by the, all UN uh, countries in the past, has tried to deal with that question by purely security means. Mm by a very strong defence, the Iron Dome, for instance, aggressive policing in the West Bank, a containment of Gaza. And for a while, that seemed to be having some effect. There's been relative security in Israel, a gradual sort of normalisation of relations between Israel and some of its Arab neighbours. But I'm afraid the horrendous uh, terrorist attacks on October the 7th have shown that ultimately that policy has failed. Mm. And there needs to be some sort of political track which gives the Palestinians some hope for going forward. One of the things that lots of politicians are debating here in the United Kingdom is whether interna international law has been broken by Israel. What's your own assessment on that? Well, look, I'm not an international lawyer, but um, I think the risk is that how they conduct this military operation, the ground operation when it happens, will determine uh, not only how Israel is viewed more widely in the region and beyond, but also whether the conflict will spread even further so than think, it has. So you think a ground invasion is effectively inevitable, then, you think? I think it is inevitable, and I don't think any Western countries are trying to dissuade uh, Israel from doing that. They cannot achieve their military objective of destroying Hamas without some form of ground uh, operations. But how they conduct mm. it is vitally important. And I think there is some truth in the fact that what they have done so far in terms of the siege, not so much the aerial bombardment, but the siege in blocking all humanitarian assistance until extremely recently in a limited way, 
uh, to the civilian population of Gaza is illegal under international humanitarian law. So that is a question, one of the many difficult choices that Israel faces over the next few days. How concerned are you about radicalisation here in the United Kingdom? People looking at what is happening in Gaza and in Israel and effectively being radicalised as a result? I think there is a risk of that, and it's one that the intelligence uh, agencies and the police are very aware of. I mean, thankfully, so far at least, we have not had the sort of terrorist response that we've seen in Belgium, we've seen in, mm. in France, but we have seen very large demonstrations and some very unpleasant language being used and bad behaviour, which, you know, has led to some arrests of people. But I haven't seen so far a need to raise the the terror threat level, for instance, from its level at the moment, which is substantial uh, in this country. And I hope that the leaders of the different communities are sensible enough to try and calm any sort of passions that are raised in the UK. Um, I'd also like to ask you about the hostage situation, if I may, because look, we've seen the release of some hostages, including, of course, the incredible moment with the handshake that we were reflecting on at the beginning of the programme. Do you think that we're right to feel a level of hope when we see these hostages being released? Or actually, should we be much more cynical about what's going on here? Well, I think both. I mean, I think we should be cynical because clearly Hamas is using the hostages as leverage. Leverage to delay the ground invasion, leverage to increase the amount of humanitarian uh, supplies coming into Gaza. But on the other hand, one of the reasons that uh, Hamas took hostages in the first place was to gain that leverage. And at the moment, the diplomacy is trying to work on ways to say to Hamas, look, release what many more of the hostages, you know, 40, 50, release all the civilian hostages at least that you have at the moment, and then maybe more humanitarian aid can come in. So I think it is a realistic possibility and a good outcome of diplomacy that's happening around the region that, that there could be more releases of hostages in the coming days. Um, thank you so much. Really interesting to get your perspective uh, on the conflict.